López. <risa> Felicidades, increíble concierto que dieron uh, en Disney Gracias. Animation. Um, tienes una voz espectacular, hermosa. You have a beautiful voice. Thank you, thank you. Gracias. ¿Habla en español? No, I wish I not enough to do it. Uh, I wouldn't. Poquito. <laughs> yeah. Poquito. It's it's wonderful. Uh, well, you guys have won two Oscars already. Remember me for Coco, um, and then Frozen, beautiful songs as well. Um, Into the unknown. It's it's it just stays in your head again. You know, like. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Me puedes cantar un poquito? Can you sing a little bit of that one? Sure. Yeah, that's um, a high pitch. Uh, how about um, I can hear you. But I won't sound for trouble while others don't. There's a thousand reasons I should go about my day and ignore your whispers, which I wish would go away. Oh. <laughs> you have a very pretty voice. Me too, right? Thank yes, you. of course. Thank you for the beat, baby. Yeah. No or like, I don't, we don't have the piano, but we have, you know, our yes. voice is an instrument. <laughs> So how did you guys get, like, for this song specifically, um, where did you get the inspiration for that particular verse? Uh, that particular verse yeah. was inspired by, always, by Jennifer Lee and Chris Buck, our directors, mm -hmm. and we worked so closely with them. But Jen had written this scene uh, up where Elsa's feeling restless but doesn't tell her sister everything and they fall asleep in the bed. Mm -hmm. And so I knew that launching into this song, which was going to be like a tug of war between Elsa's love for her family and gratitude for where she is, but also something is pulling her, um, that it needed to have like that whisper, and it needed to be like, I can hear you. Um, and the, we should talk about the voice. Right, the voice is the thing that's calling her, and it's a musical mystery, really. It's, that's why we're able to have this mystery, but also it's a musical. And, um, and so that, that voice is calling, but there's also, and she's almost, she's a little bit hypnotized. It's by haunting. It. It's haunting, yes. and that's why we have that rhythm of da dun da dun da dun. It's, it's almost like she's, she's under the spell of something. Mm -hmm. um, so we kept it very quiet. We tried to give it that sound of 2 a.m. You wouldn't want to start really loud if it's 2 a.m. and, and yeah. Anna's asleep next to her. You just kind of start it quietly. Everything, in, the story informs all the choices. So you guys compose for storytelling, pretty much. Mm -hmm. you know, cause Always. Other singers, you know, compose because of what they have lived in the past or they get inspired through stories that, you know. We're very lucky that we get to work with these amazing storytellers. Mm -hmm. And yes, we get to talk about the things we really care about deeply. And we write from a very personal place, but we get to write it through these characters. Okay. So we don't have to write the song that's like, I'm a mom and I'm feeling lots of pressure. Instead, <laughs> we get to write, let it go. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to live the story. Right. We get to tell the story. Right. Where did you guys meet? In a workshop, in a, the BMI Lemon Angle Musical Theater Writing Workshop. Try saying that seven times. In Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys both share the same interest, of course. Is that what made yeah, us Yeah, I asked her out. I mean, I, I saw her, I, was the, I wrote this show, Avenue Q, and it was the very first public performance, and she came up to me afterwards. And, very enthusiastically. Yes, so I asked her out, and um, the rest is history. We started dating first, and then we started working together. Right. That's really he made it very clear that he wasn't interested in friends. Oh, <laughs> really? How? I think he said, I don't want this to be like a friends thing. I'm asking you out on a date. <laughs> <laughs> I, Super smooth. I feel like I don't think I said that, <laughs> um, but it was, it was something, something like that. Uh, I, I, I was trying to he, trying to be clear with you. <laughs> <laughs> How has your life changed after winning the Oscar? I interviewed you guys in New York when Frozen uh, One was barely gonna come out. Yeah. So you guys have no habían ganado el Oscar todavía. So how has your life changed? Has it? Does winning an Oscar change somehow? Uh, yes and no. Okay, yes and like. Yes, for me, opportunities became available. I, I like to joke that I had to win an Oscar on the West Coast to be given the chance to have a show on Broadway that I wrote because it's such a, uh, there's some real gender parity problems there that we're trying to fix right now. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, who you are is exactly the same. Like getting a, anything, getting a gold star or, or an award, is wonderful, 
but you still have to do the hard work of yeah. feeling worthy of it. Yes. Um, so you still have to do the hard work of, of saying like, you know, outward validation is really good, but I need to do the inward validation too. You had, you did that already. <laughs> She's yeah. so emotional. She got me emotional. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm really proud of you guys. Thank um, you. Me encanta. Remember me. I love Coco. It's Thank deeply you. in my heart. And good luck winning. You're going to win the Oscar. Because you guys are nominated, right? We are. It, we are right? nominated, yes. Yes. So we don't congratulations. Expect, we don't expect you. I mean, I mean, come on. It, but it, it it'll be, be wonderful. It would be a historic thing if someone won three in a row. Like, with their first three. That's crazy. Let's vote. We can't vote, right? Uh, en el corazón sí. Se lo van a ganar. Thank Gracias. you. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias.